joining us right now, Vivek Wava, Thai Charter member and a well-known entrepreneur and philanthropist here in the Valley. Mr. Wava, thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here. Now, you have a, a reputation. You're a pro-women entrepreneur. You've, you've led the, the march for more women on the boards of companies. Absolutely. What got you interested in gender equity? Just coming to Silicon Valley and realizing it's a boys club, realizing that uh, we're leaving out half of the population and in the future that we're headed into, women actually have an advantage. The type of, what I'm researching now is advancing technologies. Everything from artificial intelligence, to computers, sensors, robots, all of these advances will allow us to solve the problems of humanity. Now, that requires empathy, it requires understanding of the problems. Well, women excel at that. They're also now uh, dominating certain fields of the sciences, so the future belongs to women. That's the research I had done, that's the book I had written, Innovating Women. And now I'm looking well beyond that. I'm looking at now how we can use technology to better mankind. How can we uplift it rather than, uh, than you know, having it descend into chaos? What, what do you think is the reason that despite so many movements, you know, your book and you, 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 your active participation in the dialogue about gender equity, Charles Sandberg's, you know, big leaning movement, we are still far away from seeing women on boards, we're still far away from seeing in any kind of decision making roles and, and, and seeing women, women are rising, let's not underestimate sure. that. Yes, uh, there are few on boards and, and few are getting money from venture capital uh, companies because it's a rigged system, it's a very small boys club and they feel threatened by women, forget them. If you now look at startups, if you even, even if you look at here on the floor of Thai, there are a lot of women over here. Women are becoming ambitious, they're now uh, becoming outspoken. They're ready to take on the big challenges and to better the world. So you're seeing this, this um, you know, tremendous upswell. You're now seeing tremendous momentum where women are stepping in and doing big things. So over time, you'll start seeing a lot of success. They'll start helping each other and you'll see the entire ecosystem getting better because of that. Now, you talked about your, your focus more on, you know, a sector which is well, several different sectors from, from sensors to solving humanity problems. What is your current core focus at the moment? I'm looking at how technology is disrupting industries. How can large companies now understand the disruption and survive it and, and how can they reinvent themselves? I'm looking at innovation systems. I'm also looking at the dark side of technologies. How do we now uh, mitigate the risks of all of these technologies? Every area of technology I look at, I see opportunity to better the world and I see opportunity to disrupt industries and to create all sorts of new social problems. I mean, look at America. I mean, the elections, you have two extremes right now. You have one extreme on the left, one extreme on the right. America is becoming polarized because of the building digital inequity, because you have the haves and the have-nots now. That's just the beginning of the type of problems we'll see in the future. The question is, how can we now avoid you know, these battles? How can we now uplift everyone so that you don't have this inequity, you don't have these problems. Those are the type of things I'm thinking about and worrying about now. What are some of the emerging trends so far at the conference that you've noticed? It, from a technology point, it's more of the same. I mean, um, uh, you know, I don't see enough, enough world-changing startups over here, which is a disappointment. And this is why, when the talk I gave, I was lecturing entrepreneurs in using technology to uplift humanity. Don't, don't worry about building the same old stupid social media apps. Don't try to copy the boys in Silicon Valley. Solve the problems that you see in the world. Make the world a better place using technology. That's what I'm teaching. We are seeing a social entrepreneurship track here at Tycon for the first time. We're seeing many social entrepreneurs coming here talking about the, the humanity problems that they're solving. Is there a particular startup that you've come across that you thought was probably worth mentioning? No, there are, there are a whole lot of them. I mean, uh, and it's too early to be able to judge them. And you know, it's really a numbers game. If you have many startups, you'll find a few that succeed. The fact that now we're putting social entrepreneurs on a pedestal, it's great. Mm -hmm. Stry didn't do that before. Mm -hmm. I mean, it did, but not to the right extent. The fact that you know, we're now aware of it, we're now looking at um, bettering the world is all good. But we shouldn't call it social entrepreneurship, it should just be social entrepreneurship you know, with a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, we try, we, right now we uh, categorize social entrepreneurs differently as if they're different. It's, it should all be about doing things profitably. Why, I mean, why do you have? I mean, why can't you be making money and doing well and better the world at the same time? And if you better the world, you win. You you know profit from it. There's nothing wrong with that. 
we don't have to now have a category of entrepreneurship in which is about non-profits and, and social. All our entrepreneurship should be about doing good for the world. Now, we've seen a big shift in terms of the, the Indian government taking an active role here at Taikon. We're starting to see, even last year, we saw tons and tons of you know ministers and delegates coming from India. This year, we have Destination India, and there's a big, uh, you know, there are several state governments exhibiting here at Taikon. We're seeing talks and uh, discussions about Startup India, Digital India. <laughs> Uh, do you think that's going to lead Taikon in a bigger space in India? I don't think it's more about Taikon. I think it's about India waking up now, Indian leaders waking up now and realizing that they have an opportunity to use technology to, to improve the country. So that's that of awakening that's happening in India. Taikon is Taikon. Taikon basically is an amazing networking group which can help uplift and which can provide the contact, you know, provide the connections necessary for entrepreneurs. The fact that Indian, uh, Indian government is recognizing it is a positive sign. I hope that they really now get serious about, about bettering the country and, and giving entrepreneurs what they need, which means they have to look at themselves. They have to remove the obstacles. They have to reduce corruption. They have to uh, improve infrastructure. They have to improve education. The Indian government has a lot of work to do. So is it fair to say you're bullish on the future of India? I'm very, very bullish about the future. India is going to rise dramatically and entrepreneurs are going to save it. And what about Silicon Valley? Silicon Valley is is always doing. I mean, it, it keeps you know reinventing itself. Silicon Valley is, is an engine. I mean, which is powering innovation all over the world. That was Vivek Vazwa. He's a fellow at Stanford Law School and also a longtime charter member. Thank you so much.